Welcome back to Nate Supercoach for 2024. This video is the round six uh, team selection video, and I'm also going to talk through some trade targets as well, who you could potentially look to bring in. All right. So first of all, before we go into who we're going to uh, pick up or who I'm at least looking at or thinking about, uh, here's how my team sits at the moment. Uh, it's important to almost kind of do this in reverse. So what I mean by that is how many, as my team sits right now, how many players on each line do I need to upgrade? And that's a question you need to sort of ask yourself as you go through your own team, okay? So, in my defense, I need to upgrade two players, D'Ambrosio and Closey. Now, they're scoring like primos, which is exciting, but ultimately, we want consistency primos. I want Luke Ryan in one of those spots, and the sixth one, I'm tossing up. Uh, so, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a second, but that's kind of who I'm looking for. So, I need two upgrades in defense. I need four in the midfield. I'm happy with Grundy and Gorn. Let's change that over there. I'm happy with Grundy and Gorn. Um, that seems like a bit of a luxury upgrade to me, the Rucks. So, I'm going to keep them as they are unless something drastic happens, one of them gets injured, or their Grundy's output or Gorn's output just severely drops off. Then that's when you sort of need to look elsewhere. But at the moment, I'm sticking with them. And in the forward line, I will say two, potentially three. Not sure if Fisher is a keeper this year. i sort of getting to the stage where I don't think he is. Um, but so, again, so if you go through your own side and look at that and go through, okay, I need two defenders, four midfielders, and three forwards to upgrade to be a full premium on field. So ideally, you want your whole team to be your primo scorers in on each line. Now, this year is a little bit tricky because the forwards haven't been that reliable. We don't have a clear sense yet at the start of round six as to who the key forwards are that we look to, that we want to bring in. Okay, so Heaney and Flanders are obviously one and two. Luke Jackson's probably another one you can throw into the mix as well, but when Darcy comes back, how does that affect his scoring? We're not sure. So Heaney and Flanders are really the only ones that we can say with some degree of certainty, because nothing's ever certain, but um, that they'll be in the top six forwards. Heaney, there's talk once uh, Adams, who the other ones, Parker and, and Mills, once they come back, that Heaney's role may change. We hope that isn't the case. We want to keep <laughs> his average of 144. We want him to keep that. So that's kind of how I'm looking. So I'm thinking at the moment... I need two upgrades for the defense. Okay, so one of them is going to be Luke Ryan. The other one, not sure. It's either going to probably be, probably be between Lockie Whitfield. Let's bring up Lockie Whitfield. The reason why I'm going Whitfield is his price is pretty good, 555000 um, you may not be able to see that behind my head, but trust me, 555000 Um And yeah, break-even is 120, so he's going to lose probably a little bit of cash or he, maybe 10000 so I might be able to pick him up sometime soon. Um, so he's he's one I am looking for. He is definitely one that I'm um, on looking at. The other one I'm looking at is Jack Steele. And the other one I'm looking at is probably Nick Martin. They're the three that I'm looking at this week. So if I get... Let's have it. So Lockie Whitfield's 555. We're going to have to sort of do a little bit of maths on the run here. Steele is 624. And Nick Martin's 563. All right, so it's most expensive to least expensive. Steele, Martin, Whitfield. All right, cool. In terms of the buys, I'm not sure if there's much of a difference... That I can tell, it's, it's what six, six, seven odd rounds away. So there's plenty of water to go under the bridge. If I did it purely on price, you'd probably look at at Whitfield because it saves you well, 10, 10, 8, 10 k. Uh, Whitfield's probably not going to get dual position status in this first block, so he'll be defence, and you'll be locking away another defence spot. You'll be taking a rookie off the field in the defence, which is what we want. It just so happens to be that at the moment that'll be either Closey or D'Ambrosio. So this is probably where Mazamo's in the firing line, I reckon. Um, I think, yeah, Mazamo will probably be traded, and that could unlock Luke Ryan in a couple of weeks. Not sure yet, because I've got some other rookies that I probably need to get rid of. And Closey, if he keeps scoring 124, he's going to be 
very, very expensive uh, for a rookie very, very soon. He could get up to Massimo's price fairly easily. So again, he could be the last upgrade. So part of me is thinking, okay, do I just let Massimo and Closey just max out completely if they're still scoring like primos and my defense will be my last two positions to upgrade? Mm, probably not. You probably don't want to have two rookies on the one line at the end, if possible, you probably want to do it one for one. That's my first thoughts. So if I upgrade one defender, the next week needs to be a forward and the next week's a midfielder. Or if I start with the midfield, the next week's a defender and forward, etc., etc., etc. Um, so if I go Whitfield, I'm locking away a defender now. Okay, no problems at all. If I go Nick Martin this week, if I get him in this week, he's going to have to go in the midfield. So that means that uh, a couple of you know Ware or Clark could be on the uh, could be on the chopping block. I do have the flexibility of Dacos coming down into the midfield, but what that's going to do? That's going to take one more rookie out of the midfield and put them on the bench, which is a good thing. But then that puts another. Actually, no, it won't. If I went say Whitfield this week, I would drop Dacos down to the midfield. Whitfield up to here. Technically, I haven't had. I've got. Uh, I haven't upgraded my defence because it's still four primos. It'll be Sheasel, Stewart, Whitfield, and Young. But I've moved Dacos to the midfield, so technically I've got. Let's say Petrarca was playing when we're at full 22 again. I'd have five in the midfield as opposed to four. But this is. This week it's going to be three. This week kind of puts a little bit of a, a spin on things as well. Again, it's only best 18. Do I really need to trade out Mazamo or Klossy? Probably not. If they're scoring like that, they're probably going to be in my top 18 scores. So that was that. Nick Martin almost certainly will get DPP after this round. So I can easily flip Nick Martin up here as well. That might mean that I throw Dacos into the middle. Dacos becomes a midfielder or Nick Martin. I could have that flexibility. I could have Dacos and Martin. I can literally just swap. So that that could also be an option as well. Uh, and the other one was Jack Steele. So a little bit more expensive. Will probably need me to use a boost. I, how much have I got in the bank? Uh, 60k. Okay, so I'm probably going to have to use a boost either way this week if I want to get um, an upgrade. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. So I think it almost is... Um, we could look at this one at a time. So Whitfield, the cheapest, no dual position player status, and the pro, the pros for getting in Whitfield, cheaper, upgrades the defence early, and consistent score all year. Lock away. That's probably the pro of Whitfield. The con, you could say he doesn't have dual position, but doesn't really mean a con so much in some ways. If he's consistently scoring in the 90s and 100s, that's what you want. That's why you bring him in at 555. Uh, he could lose a bit of cash. He could be a bit cheaper next week. That could be a move I'm, I might make next week. Um, all right, so Nick Martin. Okay, so pro for Nick Martin. He's going to have the ball in his hands a lot with Essendon, with our back line. He takes some kick-ins. Uh, even when we win against the Bulldogs, you know, 30-odd points or whatever it was, he got 100 super coach points. When we played against St Kilda, he got 130. We just got over the line. Then we got pumped by Port. He did 130 as well. So it doesn't really, doesn't seem at this point that whether we win well, win just, lose just, or lose badly, his score doesn't fluctuate too much because the ball's in his hands a lot. The only knock on Nick Martin would be his disposal efficiency. That could drop some scores potentially, but he's you know he's still thrown out a couple of hundred and thirties with with that disposal efficiency. So maybe that's that's incorrect. Um, probably that's so a pro would be dual position. I can throw him back to defence if need be. Could keep him in the midfield as well. That's that's a good thing as well. Con another con for Nick would off the top of my head would probably be his price. It was five sixty three. I could have picked him up at five hundred and ten, five twenty. So do I cop that bit of money, bit of the hit financially? But knowing that I've got a keeper, is he going to be a keeper? Hmm. Probably. I don't think he'll be a top six defender. I really can't see that. Not with the likes of Luke Ryan, um, Sheasel and Stewart, and you throw Dan Houston in the mix as well. Could he be a top eight midfielder? Yeah, maybe. So would would I be keeping if I brought him in? I'd be wanting to have Nick Martin and 
uh, be confident that he's going to be a keeper all year in either mid or defence. So, you know, that's something to think about. The other one would be Jack Steele. Now, he's, what, 624,000. Uh, again, probably could have gone on him a week or two early. I didn't really need him, though, because my rookies were scoring quite well. Not this round, obviously, but um, I probably wanted to... Probably left it maybe a week too late, potentially. So Jack Steele plays tomorrow night. If I pick him up, this is recorded Wednesday, so if I pick him up for this week, he's a he's a viable vice-captain option, I would think, up against the Bulldogs. So do you pay a little bit extra, clear out some dead rookies to grab Steele, who I'm fairly confident will be a top-eight midfielder? Um... My head may be obscuring this, but I will tell you the stats anyway. Um, yeah, my head's probably right in the way there. So he's 624. Uh, he's probably going to make another 34k. Uh, break even of 70. So he's projected to get 130. That's his projected score. So he'll go up another 34k. That puts him at 650. So it's virtually this week, now or never. Am I confident that... Eh, you know, am, am I happy to overpay? Eh. Probably not. I would have maybe liked to have picked him up two weeks ago. Um, and his last three games against the Dogs, 96, 133, and 99. So he's gonna, you'd think he'd score quite well on that. Uh, do you cop the 100 or so K overpaying, for want of a better word, knowing that you're going to lock him in and he's going to be a top eight midfielder and you've got that in place? Decisions, decisions. Uh... It's a tricky one. It's a bit of a it's it's a tough call. Got to be honest, it's a tough call. But um, I think what we'll do to start with is I'm going to have to get rid of McKercher. So he's on the trade out, and I'm going to go McKercher to Graham. That's what I'm definitely going to do. That's locked in, 100%. That's locked in. And all right. So once this comes in, okay. So I'm going to select a mid to trade in. And it's going to be Graham from Gold Coast. Will Graham from the Gold Coast. Players complete trade. All right, so I've got about 230k left in the bank after that trade. Now, if I want to get to... Uh, let's do some quick maths on the run here. All right, so if I want to get to Whitfield at 555, I've got to find at least 300k to get to Whitfield. Now that could be a Sanders, so 310. That won't get me anywhere, that'll get me 535. So I can't get either. So I'm gonna to have to use a boost because I don't wanna trade out Roberts yet. I don't wanna trade out uh, Sharp just yet. He's got a bit more money to make. Cadman's probably on the chopping block, but he's 271. Dempsey, mm, maybe another week. But his cash generation's gonna dry up as well. So I'm gonna to have to use a boost to get any of them. So I think a little bit more thinking might be required, but that's what I'm sort of thinking of at the moment. Um, I don't really have a finalised team yet. I'm still umming and ahhing about those decisions, but at least if you know the thought process behind what I'm thinking. If I trade out Sanders, I could go Sanders and probably uh, uh, what I could do. to get, if, I, if I wanted to go uh, early on Whitfield, let's say, I could trade out Sanders bring Dacos down to the midfield, and then trade out Clark, and that sh that will get me to Whitfield. So then Whitfield will be up up, up here. All right? um, that's another option as well. Or it would be I trade out Clark. Uh, yeah, that should work. Uh, unless I move Graham back up. So that's that's an option as well. Um, if I go to Steel, see 624, so I'm going to have to unlock 400,000. So that could be a straight, I guess the other option I have is to say take out Cadman, trade out Cadman 271 to, to Nuon from North, and that would then, I would have to activate my boost, and then if I used, so he's what, he'd be 120, he's 120,000, let's say 271, 274, so that would leave me with about 300 after that. I would probably then need to trade either Howes if I wanted to get Whitfield in defence and keep Dacos there, and if I wanted to do that D'Ambrosio closey thing off, not sure whether I want to do that. I'd probably trade Clark, I would think, and that will get me Steele or Nick Martin in the midfield. I think that's what I'm going to do. 
I think Whitfield can wait. I think he might be one of my last upgrades, potentially, or I might upgrade him next week with the view to get Luke Ryan in not too soon after from Ambrosio. So that leaves Nick Martin or Steele. Uh, uh, Head is saying... Head is saying Nick Martin because he's cheaper. And I, if I don't get Nick Martin this week, I've missed the boat. Head is also saying I've already missed the boat on steel at 624. Not sure on that one. Not sure. I'll have to, uh, you'll have to tune in after round six to see which way I've gone. But at least it'll be Nick Martin or Steele this week. That's who I'm going to be going for. Glad we got there. Okay, so in terms of vice captain and captain, so we've got the Bulldogs and St Kilda tomorrow night. If I go Steel, I'll probably have Steel as vice captain. Uh, Gorn's on the bye. So it could be a case of Steel into Bontempelli. No, that won't work because they're playing each other. Sorry, I thought Bulldogs were playing the Bombers again this week, which they are not. So I could go Bont or Steel, VC. Um, captain option. Uh, you could have Dacos. Dacos could be an option, uh, maybe Butters, um, maybe even Heaney, if you wanted to throw Heaney in for a, a bit of a pod captain choice. Decisions, decisions, I think I will take a bit of time, work out between Martin and Steele, let me know in the comments section below which way you reckon I should go, or what, which way you would go, because um, the aim of this channel is not so much me, right, do this, it's more building a, a community, etc. So if you, if you have an idea of who I should go to, pop it in the comment section, and uh, I think uh, at the end of this round you'll see which way I went, but um, yeah, so we got uh, not long to go now till round six, so after round six, the DPP positions kick in, so several players are going to get dual positions, so we can move them around the field, and that could change the layout of a lot of Supercoach teams as well, in terms of bringing in rookies and a lot of movement, so there's going to be more moving parts after round six, if there wasn't enough moving parts this season already with the buys. There's going to be more now with the dual position. All right. Thanks very much for watching. Enjoy round six. Talk to you soon.